Uh, hi, thank you for the introduction. I'm Stephen Miller and I'll be talking about uh, parameterized shape models for clothing. Uh, so I'm going to start with just a little motivation for why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, the generic task of manipulating a deformable object is a very difficult one. Uh, the near infinite state space the cloth can have makes it very hard to perceive the state it's in and then complex dynamics make it difficult to manipulate. So our goal in this work is to look at just a small subspace of the problem where we try to fold on a uh, two-dimensional table, basically. So our uh, goal is to enable robust autonomous robotic cloth folding. Uh, some of our prior work, uh, we showed that we were able to execute user-specified folds on any polygonal cloth. So if you have this kind of simple polygonal representation of the cloth, then we know how to fold it. And furthermore, we have parameterized fold sequences for different categories, uh, so sweaters, shirts, pants, and towels. If you know the shape of it, then we know how to fold it. Um, a few problems with this work, though. One was that it relied on human input, so a user had to specify that uh, polygon by hand. And a second one was it used open loop control. So once the polygon had been specified, the robot would blindly continue folding and assume it had gotten 100% accuracy, uh, the result being that minor errors in calibration would compound over successive folds. So our goal in this work is to close that perception loop. So given any observed article of clothing, we want to find a polygonal representation which gives the location of these key landmark points so we know how to fold it. And we'd like to use this approach to track both folded and spread out configurations. So a brief overview. Uh, for every category of clothing, we're going to define some sort of parameterized skeletal model. And then we're going to optimize over those model parameters to best fit an observed contour. Uh, the resulting parameters, we predict, are going to give us the most likely configuration of a given model class. And then we're going to classify the article uh, by seeing which model yields the best fit. Okay. So now, what are our models? Uh, for every class of clothing, we're designing a model. And this has a few components. Uh, there needs to be a set of parameters so we can define the structure of it. Uh, with those parameters, an associated contour and landmark points, uh, a number of legality constraints on the configuration, and then some method of translating, rotating, or scaling the instance. For example, on a long sleeve shirt, we have 24 parameters. So there are the 11 skeletal points, which add 22, uh, and then two sleeve widths. There are 13 landmark points, shown in blue, and then a contour associated with it. And a number of legality constraints, such as there can be no self-intersections, the collar has to be above the neck, uh, the sleeve width has to be less than its length, uh, and plenty of other ones, just uh, basically common sense things that would rule out incorrect configurations. And then in order to do translation, rotation, or scaling, since most of our parameters are simply points, we just need to translate, rotate, or scale the points, and then scale the sleeve width accordingly. And we designed similar models for short sleeve shirts, pants, and towels. Okay, so now at runtime, we're going to be presented with some image, presumably coming from a robot's camera, and we're going to perform a bird's eye transformation to remove any perspective effects that we have. And then we'll extract the contour via some form of background segmentation. Um, in our experiments, we used the article of clothing on a green table, so hue thresholding was sufficient to do this. Now the optimization strategy. Uh, we want to estimate the clothing configuration by doing numeric optimization over the parameters. And this is going to require a few things. Uh, some sort of cost function to quantify the fit of the model. Uh, a sort of method for imposing any legality constraints we had, an initialization procedure to get a good starting guess, and then a numeric solver for performing the optimization. So the cost function will have two terms. One is the average nearest neighbor distance from the model contour to the observed contour, and then likewise the distance from the observed contour to the model contour. And our total fit is going to be scored as a weighted sum of these two terms. In practice, we found an alpha value of 0.5 worked well, but it tended to be fairly robust to variations in alpha. Uh, now we'd like to impose our constraints on the cost function itself. So we're first going to normalize this fit function, so it goes from 0 to 1. Then for every violated constraint, we're going to add a cost of 1. And the net effect of this is that we're guaranteed to always favor any legal state over any illegal state. If it's a legal state, it will have a cost less than 1. If it's illegal, no matter how well it fits, it will have a cost of greater than 1. Now the initialization procedure. We're going to start with some canonical pose in an arbitrary starting location. We'll align the two centers to get the translation, align the principal axes to get a net rotation, and align the bounding boxes to get a rough sense of scale. 
So now when we're doing the actual optimization, uh, we simply use a black box solver, which is a variant of coordinate descent with an adaptive step size. Uh, the details are listed in the paper. But the problem with any sort of gradient descent method is that you're bound to get caught in many local minima, especially because our cost function is far from convex. So we have no guarantee that uh, gradient descent will give us the best uh, solution. So our solution to this was do a multi-phase optimization. We're going to start by over-constraining the parameters of our model and then slowly relaxing over time. Uh, the key idea here is that the biggest exploration will be done in the smallest state space, and then we'll fine-tune it as we get closer and closer to the correct result. So phase one, we begin with the orientation. Uh, so we're optimizing just over the rotation of the points, and we're constraining the rest to the template. In phase two, we do a symmetric optimization, where we'll optimize over half of the parameters and constrain the rest by symmetry. And finally, in phase three, we do the asymmetric phase, where we optimize over every parameter. And in the end, we converge on a fairly good parse of what the clothing article looks like. Okay. So now the question is, how can we extend this to possibly folded clothing articles? Uh, well, in our framework, we've already given ourselves the tools to do this. Uh, from any model, we can simply generate a new folded model by augmenting the parameters with an additional parameter uh, representing a fold line on the clothing. Now we can just infer the new contour and landmark points geometrically from the location of the old ones and the location of this new fold line we've introduced. And optionally, if we know the model won't move anywhere, we hold all other parameters fixed and only optimize over a fold line. And in this way, multiple folds can be defined recursively. So I would start with a spread out model. Then after executing one fold, I get a folded model. If I want to introduce a second fold, then I'll fold that model, et cetera. So an example, we'll initialize some folded model with a guess at where the fold line would be. Optimize over the location of that fold line. And then once we've localized where the fold is, then when a second fold is introduced, we initialize a new fold model on that and repeat this process. And this can be done iteratively for the whole uh, folding procedure. Now some results. Uh, so we tested this on a data set with 40 articles of clothing, each in 10 configurations, so a 400 image data set. Uh, we had 10 long sleeve shirts, short sleeve shirts, pants, and towels. And you can see below uh, the set of the articles that we used and some common configurations. Uh, for pose estimation, we wanted to provide some ground truth. So we hand annotated the location of each landmark point. And then we introduce a baseline by which to compare our results. Uh, for the baseline, we chose an identical cost function solver and initial template. But it has no interior structure, uh, no legality constraints, and no line of symmetry. So this is meant to be the analog of a purely shape-based fitting where we're just fitting an n-sided polygon to the article of clothing. So here are some results. Uh, you can see below some typical results that we get. Uh, as you can see by the numbers, with the exception of a towel, which has no internal structure, so the two models are actually equivalent, uh, we tend to do at least twice as good as the polygonal approach, uh, getting errors on the order of one to two centimeters. Uh, so now the next question is, we've seen how well it does if we know the model and optimize. How can we predict what model it is? Uh, so to do this, we ran all models on all 400 images, and we selected the one that yielded the best fit. Uh, so this provided a method of uh, classification. And we found that in 100% of cases, the correct model was chosen. Uh, so uh, no matter what, uh, for any image, then the correct model was the one that fit best. So you don't need to know ahead of time what class of clothing you're looking at to be able to fit the parameters. Uh, now, the motivation for this work, if you recall, was to make a robot fold laundry. So to do this, we integrated this into our pre-existing folding code on the Willow Garage PR2. And so initially, it was an open loop method where a user would input a polygon, and then each successive fold would be done blindly. Um, now we've tried to close that loop, so we start by fitting an initial model. And then after each fold, we'll update the model accordingly and change the trajectory. So we'll do a fit a model, execute fold one, fit a new folded model, and continue this approach. And uh, this is a video of the PR2 running it. 
So it'll start with a spread out article of clothing and fit a uh, shirt model to it. Then once it's fit that, then it knows how to fold it using the parameterized folding sequence. And now once it's executed one fold, uh, then it'll try to determine that location and update the procedure. So it's seen that the fold wasn't quite accurate, but it updated its estimation, so it was still able to grab it on the second round. And then it's going to repeat this process uh, to fold the shirt. In conclusion, uh, we designed a novel approach to clothing perception, which uses skeletal models. Uh, we tested this on a large data set of test images, and we found that we were able to classify and estimate the pose of our models with a fairly high level of accuracy. Uh, we also use this to provide visual feedback to a robotic folding procedure to make it more robust. Thank you.